Welcome back to the show for another how-to episode. Here with me is CEO and co-founder of Casa, Nick Newman, and we're going to be setting up Casa Inheritance. You're going to be surprised how easy and fast this is. Nick, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Natalie. Really excited to be doing this again. Okay. So first of all, why is it so important to set up an inheritance plan when it comes to your Bitcoin? Well, a lot of people don't think about this, right? Because they're they're just thinking about how do I make sure that my Bitcoin is secure while I'm alive? But especially as we start to, uh, as people, you know, have families, they have kids, they get married, then they start thinking, oh, I need to make sure that my family who maybe isn't as much of a Bitcoin, uh, like hardcore Bitcoiner as I am, I need to make sure that they can access this stuff too. And so we had, we've started to have this request more and more from our customers where they were saying, I'm worried about my family being able to access my Bitcoin if I pass away. And so this is a, a really important part of self-custody. You have to think about both your Bitcoin security while you're in life, and then also your Bitcoin security um, in death. And in case something happens to you, which feels a little morbid, but it's a part of everybody's life. And so planning ahead, you know, Bitcoiners, we, we plan and planning ahead for, for your own death is part of that. And making sure that your family can access your Bitcoin is really important. So before we go through the step-by-step -step process, is there anything people should know about what they're going to be setting up with maybe a family member, a loved one, a friend? What, what, should they need to, what should they know before they actually set up an inheritance plan? The thing to know, I mean, you said this at the beginning, it's easier than people think. When we were designing this product, we really designed it for the family, not for the account owner. We designed it for the people who will be recovering this Bitcoin in a worst case scenario. And a lot of times those people are less technical. They're not as comfortable using a bunch of hardware wallets or seed phrases. And so we designed this to be really easy for them in a way where it just feels like you're using a normal banking app from their perspective, where you're just using your phone and that's all you need from a from a two of three multi-key vault perspective, our basic security level. All you need is your phone in order to access these um, this Bitcoin. And we've built a lot of security precautions around that using multi-sig to make sure that that doesn't open up a security hole for people. But the whole point is, how do we make this as easy as possible for the family while maintaining this robust level of security? And so that's the thing to know is just... Um, I think people think, oh, this might be hard. And hopefully you'll agree after we show you, it's, it's actually very easy for both you and your family to set up. All right, well, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna open up my Casa app. And for this, since this is an inheritance plan, um, we're gonna get a little help from uh, a volunteer, a familiar face. My fiance, Sam Callahan, is gonna be joining us and he's gonna record his screen so that you can see what's going on in that, um, in that space. So I'm in my app right now and on the screen is the, is the pay tab, but I'm assuming you hit inheritance, which is the third tab. Yeah, go on over to the inheritance tab. Okay, so let's click get started. Now it's about inviting the recipient. So, so you're going to put in Sam's email here and just invite him to be the recipient for your account. And okay. it'll give you some options on which vault you can actually choose down below. And we're just going to do the three key vault. Okay, so I am typing in... Sam's address here. And so the thing to know, just as you're going through that, to give a little context of what a recipient is, a recipient's a little bit different from a beneficiary. So in a traditional financial account setup, you, you think I've got like your, for your 401k, you think, okay, I've got a beneficiary for this account. And if I pass away, that financial institution is going to rename this account in my beneficiary's name and give them access to these assets. With CASA, you're self-custodying the Bitcoin. So we can't actually, it's not a beneficiary situation where we give your um, family member direct access to the assets. All we can do is help ensure that they have access to the number of keys they need right. to then access the assets. So it's just a little bit of a different scenario than you might be used to, but we do use that word recipient as something that feels familiar, but you can tell it's a little different than a traditional beneficiary. 
Right. And just a reminder, when you're setting up multi-sig, multi-signature, collaborative custody, CASA does not have your Bitcoin. Basically, they have one key out of three or out of five so that when you go to unlock your Bitcoin, there are several keys. You're decentralizing um, the, the security component so there's no single point of failure. And when it comes to inheritance planning, you need to be able to have someone access that that key or multiple keys that you have with CASA so that, um, you know, you, they can unlock the Bitcoin, whether it's your kids, your, your loved ones. So, um, I just placed Sam's email in here. I'm going to go to review details and there's an acknowledgement that you're going to read basically saying that I'm electing Sam as my recipient. And what's important to note is they cannot see my vault balance. I can revoke their access at any time. I can reject a mistaken claim if they go in there trying to, you know, access the key when they're not supposed to, and they must keep the shared keys secure. Casa's not able to help access lost keys. So I'm going to send the invite over to Sam and he should be getting an email. So when Sam gets this email, what it's going to say is, hey, uh, you've been named as a recipient for this person's account. Do you accept this? And then when you accept it, we're creating a link between your two accounts on the back end that says Sam is now authorized to receive shared keys from you to help maintain those keys, like doing health checks on those keys, which are a really important part of self-custody is making sure that those keys remain healthy over your lifetime. And so this, this link is basically allowing him to help share pieces of your self-custody setup, which is the important part for ensuring that inheritance will work because we're basically giving him access to some keys mm -hmm. while in, in a very secure encrypted way while you are alive. And then we match that with the CASA key if you pass away so that th he doesn't have a, a threshold of keys needed to spend right. Bitcoin before that event happens, but afterwards he does. Right. Um, so a screen popped up, by the way, that asks whether I want to enable enhanced verification, which is optional for U.S. residents. Um, what is that and should I click yes? So today we won't do that. But what that is, is it is for CASA private client members only who live in the U.S. And this is basically an extra level of verification that we will do to ensure that um, you actually passed away and that we should enable Sam to access the keys in your vault. And so the way that works is instead of having a six month timer, which is typically how we handle that uh, handover period after you pass away, we have a manual verification by our team where we will take in some documents from you ahead of time that help identify you and Sam. So it's not quite KYC, but it is PII, personal identifying information. And then uh, after you pass away, we can use that to actually verify death certificates. So for some people, this provides an extra level of comfort if they are less privacy, privacy sensitive about CASA having access to this info. Got it. All right, it's time to bring in our awesome volunteer. Hi, Sam. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Hi, Nick. Hi, Natalie. Um, excited to figure out this Bitcoin inheritance thing. It's been a problem for so long and I think CASA's really fixed it. Okay, so Sam, did you receive that email? Yes, I did, and I uh, accepted it. Okay, so now on the Manage Inheritance screen, it basically um, says that I can finish setup by hitting on the shared vault, and then it asks if I want to share the mobile key. So do I tap that, and then all of a sudden a QR code pops up? Yep. So this is the main part of setup here. So you're going to share the mobile key. Sam's going to scan this on your phone. And when he scans that, it's going to share an encrypted version of that mobile key to his phone. Success. And I got success in confetti. Awesome. Confetti means you win and you're all good. And so for the three key setup, that's actually, that's it. That's all you got to do because wow. now the wow. person has this encrypted mobile key saved on their phone and then they will have access to the casa key after you pass away and that gives them the two out of three keys that are needed in order to access the bitcoin that's in this vault so it's a really simple process it takes a couple of minutes 
Okay, so I went back to the inheritance tab and now I see manage inheritance, my setup. You see Sam with his email address under my recipients with the BTC Vault 3 key and it says healthy. And if I tap on it, you see that they have access to the mobile key. But let's just do a test run, okay? Let's say, you know, Sam's not in a great mood. We're in a big fight. Um, he wants to try to take my Bitcoin. So why don't you try to access that key, Sam? All right. Mobile key. Okay, so start vault claim. Okay, so now my little healthy tab went to pink and it says claim initiated. So it says that basically Sam is trying to claim my key and trying to use it. So I'm gonna reject the claim. And if you didn't reject that claim, what would happen is on Sam's end, it shows, hey, this vault will unlock on this date, which is six months from now. Mm -hmm. And at that six month time, then it would unlock, he'd be able to see the Bitcoin in the vault, and he'd be able to use those two keys to move the assets out. But during that time, Natalie, we're sending you notifications every month saying, Hey, a vault claim has been initiated. If you if you didn't, uh, if this isn't supposed to happen, please go into the app and cancel it. And then you go in and tap the button to, to cancel it. And so it's a, um, it gives you that, that six month wait period. A, a few people have asked why, why six months? In our opinion, it gives you a great amount of time to like really ensure that, hey, this, this person isn't just on a trip overseas for a month or something like that, where they could be tricked from this perspective. So um, yeah, so it's, it's very easy to reject that. And then if you and Sam remained in a fight you can even revoke his access to the vault and take him off of it completely. <laughs> right. Wait, Sam, can you um, request that access again? I'm just going to film that area that says the six months because that screen, I like went off of it really quickly. So I'm going to try it one more time. Yeah. So on the reject claim page, it says a six month verification period has begun. If you do not reject this claim, your recipient will gain access on February 21st, 2025. Um, Nick, so is there anything that people should know in terms of any implications? Like, for example, taxes. If I were to pass away and s someone from my family access my Bitcoin, um, are they going to have to pay capital gains taxes? Or is that something you advise them to talk to their attorneys or financial planners about? Yeah. So the one important thing to note, thank you for asking this question, is that CASA is really not handling the legal side of this whole thing. So there's two pieces you got to be thinking about. You got to be thinking about how do I make sure that the Bitcoin is actually accessible so it's not completely lost if I pass away. You also need to think about how do I make sure that this stays within the legal system for my jurisdiction and is properly accounted for so that my family isn't in trouble, isn't going through months or years of court cases around this. And so doing that planning work ahead of time can ensure that your family has the right roadmap to be able to use this Bitcoin to, to benefit themselves. Um, and you can do things, I think, that depending on your jurisdiction that can um, affect the tax, like the estate tax, mm -hmm. uh, transfer tax in one way or another. And so we really recommend talking to an estate lawyer, figuring out how you're going to handle that side of it as part of this overall process. And it doesn't mean that you have to have the estate lawyer uh, side of things all figured out before you go set up inheritance. Because right. in some ways you just wanna make sure first and yes. foremost that if something unexpected happens, that Bitcoin is still accessible. So get that set up and then layer in the, the legal side of it to make sure that everything is by the books and is done properly. Um, I think that's the best way to set up your family for success there. No, that's great advice. And and every state really differs when, when it comes to the, the laws with estates and probate and all of that. So make sure to do your homework. Um, all right. Well, while we still have Sam, uh, let's just show you what it looks like to revoke access. So let's say I decide that I'm going to have another trusted recipient. I can just go right into the re recipient um, tab and hit where it says mobile key shared. I can go to the bottom and it says revoke vault access and I can choose revoke access. Um, so what happens on your screen, Sam? Uh, it just says all is quiet now. So the thing went away. No more key. Yeah. Yeah, so that revokes your ability to make 
vault claims it revokes your ability to use any keys that are part of an Natalie's vault, all of that. And it, it happens, you know, instantly like that. And yep. so, um, there's many reasons actually that people might want to do this that might not involve a, any sort of falling out or anything like that with your family. Like maybe as part of your estate planning process, you realize, oh, I want to have a trustee who's helping with this or my, my lawyer or executor. There's, there's a bunch of different reasons why you might do this. And so it's very easy to do and to take somebody out, to put them back in later, however you need to do it. Um, and I think the other thing along these lines that's worth mentioning that we get questions about is people will say, well, I own, I want to make sure that this is left for my kids, but they're not old enough to hold keys and to be able to manage this kind of thing. And so in that scenario, that's where you can use somebody like an executor or like a trustee or even a trusted friend or family member to help um, access these keys for the benefit of your your recip uh, your beneficiaries in your will. And so that's also why we've kind of not designated this as a, a financial beneficiary. This is a recipient who could be an executor or it could be the actual beneficiary of the assets. Got it. Yeah, it's so important, especially if you have kids and, you know, if you have a favorite that might change over the decades. <laughs> All right, Sam, thank you so much for helping on your end. Was it pretty simple? It was very simple. And like Nick said, it just immediately disappeared when Natalie rejected me. Uh, so it uh, worked amazingly. It was flawless. All right. Well, thanks so much, Sam. Um, and Nick, thank you so much for walking us through it. It, it honestly took maybe a couple of minutes. I, I know I asked a lot of questions to stretch this out just to get information, but this is so, so important. Um, for those of you who might have been following me, I a friend of mine passed away last year. He was a Bitcoiner. Thankfully, he had a plan in place so his parents could access um, the Bitcoin that he owned. But it is really important because something can happen that is so tragic and unexpected. So make sure to do your planning. Nick, thank you for joining me anything else you want people to know before we sign off um no i thank you natalie thank you sam this has been great and i'm really excited for more people to see how this works because a lot of times people have trouble kind of conceptualizing how it works until they just see it and then things click for them so i'm very excited for people to see this yeah, and you saw it on the screen. Um, head to my link, casa.io slash Natalie. Uh, we have a promo for you that's um, operating right now. I'm a customer. So full disclosure, I've partnered with Casa, but I'm also a customer. Really excited that this is the, the solution that exists for people to be able to multi-sig in a safe way, in a private way, and to be able to do um, Casa inheritance. So thanks so much. And uh, write your comments below and make sure you sign up for Casa. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Coin Stories. This show is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Nothing should constitute as official investment advice, and you should always do your own research. My inbox is open. If you want to share feedback or guest suggestions, just reach out at natalie at talkingbitcoin.com. Make sure you're subscribed to the show and check out my free newsletter, nataliebrunel.substack.com. I'll see you next time.